Hello blood sugar champions! Wouldn't it be great to wake up with a fasting blood sugar like this every day? If you've ever felt desperate about your high morning glucose levels, you're not alone. I've been right there with you. But just recently something changed that turned my desperation into hope. I think I found a way to bring my morning glucose from diabetic levels to non-diabetic levels for good. I also discovered a delicious breakfast meal that doesn't spike my blood sugar. Mm, this is so good. Over the past six months, I dedicated every single day of my life to unraveling the mysteries of my fasting blood sugar levels. I paid close attention to everything I do, everything I eat and how I can optimize my daily routine and medication regimen. I was simply trying to find ways to hack my own body to bring my morning glucose down. And guess what? It's been a game changer for me. I came up with 10 blood sugar hacks that you should absolutely consider if you're really trying to fix your morning glucose. As always, talk to your healthcare professional first to see if these hacks might work for you. Starting with blood sugar hack number 10, and this one really surprised me. I found out that my morning blood sugar level very much depends on what I eat the night before. When I eat pizza for dinner, it will spike my blood sugar at night and the glucose will remain elevated, leading to a higher morning blood sugar than what I would like to see. But when I eat quinoa salad for dinner with beans, corn, lots of vegetables and olives, my blood sugar only goes up slightly after dinner and then it goes back down and my fasting glucose is perfect. Now the reason for that is that pizza is rich in carbohydrates but also loaded with fat. The carbs spike my blood sugar and the fats will keep it elevated for up to 12 hours. On the other hand, the quinoa salad is rich in fiber and protein and relatively low in fat. The carbs from the quinoa and the beans raise my blood sugar just a bit but the fiber and protein ensures a slower release of glucose and lower glucose overnight and in the morning. So my hack number 10 to lower morning blood sugar is eating a healthy balanced dinner consisting primarily of whole foods rich in both protein and fiber. Now it is perfectly fine to include both carbs and fat but as you could see I get much better results with complex carbohydrates things like quinoa, lentil or chickpea and healthy fats things like avocado, Greek yogurt or extra virgin olive oil. On this screen you can see a full list of foods that will make a perfect addition to your dinner plate. Moving on to my next hack for fixing morning blood glucose. I would have never believed that this one really makes a difference but during my six months experiment I learned that it really does. It also has to do with dinner but this time it's not about what you eat for dinner, but when you eat dinner. When I ate my dinner after 8 p.m., my blood sugar was slightly elevated throughout the night and in the morning. But when I ate my dinner before 7 p.m., my blood sugar stayed closer to normal non-diabetic levels. The difference is clearly visible in this graph. Now you might say, it, okay, Tom, this worked for you, but it might not work for everyone. Okay, fair point. But I digged even deeper and I found a study where researchers compared the glucose levels of two groups of patients. One group ate dinner at 6 p.m., the other group ate dinner at 9 p.m. Now both groups ate exactly the same food, of course. And the result was that the group that ate dinner earlier not only had lower morning glucose, but lower glucose levels throughout the entire following day. So my hack number nine is really simple. Eat your dinner early, ideally before 7 p.m. But the only thing we need to be careful about with this approach is late night snacking because it doesn't matter when you eat dinner if you hoover a bag of chips on the couch while watching TV after that. If you really need that late night snack try to keep it healthy. Things like olives or nuts in their natural form or veggie sticks with hummus are much better options. That way you're much more likely to lower your blood glucose levels in the morning back to normal. But before we talk about more hacks Let's talk about what normal glucose actually is. A normal fasting blood glucose level for someone without diabetes is 70 to 99 milligrams per deciliter. Fasting blood glucose levels between 100 and 125 milligrams per deciliter usually means that you have prediabetes. And fasting blood glucose level 126 milligrams per deciliter or higher usually means you have diabetes. But even after you've been diagnosed with diabetes, it is still possible to achieve those normal glucose levels most of the time. Time. And that's exactly what I was able to do during this six month experiment. The next thing that helped me get there was regular exercise. Wait, don't click away. I know you heard that before, but let me explain. Exercise is like a magic pill that will make you more insulin sensitive 
and that will ultimately bring your morning blood sugar down. Look at this, during my 6 months experiment I compared my blood sugar levels at night and in the morning following a workout. These are in blue. And I compared them with nights and mornings that didn't follow the workout. These are in red. The average fasting blood sugar on days following the workout was 95. And the average fasting blood sugar on days that didn't follow a workout was 115. I could clearly see the positive impact that physical activity had on my blood sugar levels. Now exercise just like whole foods diets are often underestimated because they don't bring the immediate results like some medications do. But the kind of physical activity I've been doing over the past 6 month is a combination of strength training, mobility training and zone 2 cardio. I think these kinds of exercise are the best to help me feel good and improve my insulin sensitivity. And I tried my best to do some kind of exercise for about 60 minutes at least 4 times a week. But really any kind of physical activity you can squeeze in your schedule is worth it. No matter if you live with type 1, type 2, LADA or any other sort of diabetes. When you exercise regularly, eat healthy and stay patient, you will see improvements to not only your morning glucose levels but to your overall glucose levels and it will come sooner than you think. And there is one more major benefit to this approach because as you become more insulin sensitive, your blood sugar will become more predictable and this will make it much more easier to manage your diabetes and your blood sugar in the long run. Moving on to hack number 7 on on how to fix your morning glucose. This one is a lot easier than exercise, trust me, but for me it was the most surprising thing that I found out during my experiment. On most nights I managed to get more than 7 hours of good quality uninterrupted sleep. You can see that during those nights my blood sugar stayed fairly stable and my fasting glucose in the morning is perfect. But when I got to bed late or when I woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't fall asleep again, my glucose spiked during night time which led to an elevated morning blood sugar. So my hack number 7, get a good night's sleep. I personally try to sleep about 7 to 8 hours a day and I try to go to bed early, ideally around 9 pm or 9.30 pm. Because there are many studies that show that the best quality sleep we can get is before midnight. And this works really well especially on those days when I do some kind of physical activity because that activity makes me tired and I fall asleep early really easily. Other things that help me get good quality sleep are avoiding caffeinated drinks in the afternoon or evening, not staring at any screen for about half an hour before I go to bed and sleeping in a room with relatively low temperature. Let's move to another hack to lower morning blood sugar. You see a common cause of elevated morning glucose that many diabetics struggle with is dawn phenomenon. Between 3 am and 8 am our body releases cortisol and growth hormone. These hormones signal your liver to make glucose. Now the glucose is supposed to provide energy to help wake you up but it also spikes your blood sugar. And that's kind of a problem if you're diabetic. Thankfully there are ways to deal with dawn phenomenon and we're gonna get to them in a second. But first we need to find out if dawn phenomenon is really the driving force of your elevated morning blood sugar or if it's something else. And the only way you can really find that out is by pricking your finger and checking your blood sugar every two hours throughout the night and throughout the morning or wearing a continuous glucose monitor which collects the blood sugar data for you. And that's exactly what I've been doing every night over the past 6 months. I kept a journal where I tracked my blood sugar numbers and took notes of what I ate, what medications I took, what physical activity did and how I felt. Once a week I analyzed all the data in my journal and this was the game changer. After a few months I finally really started to understand what's causing my blood sugar in the morning being elevated. Just for the record, hack number 6, check your blood sugar frequently, ideally using a CGM and keep a detailed journal. Before we talk about how I deal with dawn phenomenon, I just want to let you know that you can now message me directly and watch bonus content on my Patreon. I respond to every question from my patrons and I'm happy to share everything I learned living with diabetes for over 35 years. Places in the group are limited so check out the link below and join while you still can. Moving on to the next hack to lower morning blood sugar. This one was really big for me and it's optimizing insulin. I know that most of you watching need to inject insulin externally but even if you don't it's super important to understand how insulin works and how it can help you fight that morning blood sugar spike. Remember we talked talked about liver making more glucose early in the morning and raising our blood sugar. What happens next in a non-diabetic body is that pancreas responds and releases insulin to regulate your blood sugar. But if you live with diabetes we have a problem because your pancreas either doesn't make any insulin or your body is not able to use that insulin effectively and your blood sugar remains elevated. Now a simple solution to that is to inject the right amount of insulin 
at the right time to sort of imitate what's happening in the healthy body. Now I said it's simple, but it's not easy. During my six months experiment, I discovered that my blood sugar always starts spiking around 6 a.m., which is when I usually get up and it continues spiking until about 9 a.m. A great example of Dawn effect in action. But I wanted to get rid of that spike and because I use insulin pump, what I did was simply I increased my basal insulin dose between 3.30 a.m. and 7.30 a.m. and this helped me to eliminate about 80% of that spike. See the difference between the blue line and the red line. Now I understand that not all of you take insulin externally and not all of you have access or want to use an insulin pump, but there are other things you can do. The key thing I like to focus on is reducing insulin resistance and improving insulin sensitivity with regular exercise and healthy diet. But if you are on multiple daily injections and take basal insulin like Lantus, Treceba, Levemir or Tuheo and struggle with an early morning spike, you might need to increase that long-lasting insulin dose as well or change the timing when you take that long-lasting insulin. To get the optimal effect, some people need to take their long-lasting insulin before they go to bed, some in the morning and some even split the dose and take portion of it at different times of day. But before you make any changes, please keep in mind there is no one size fits all all solution. So carefully analyze your blood sugar trends and discuss your treatment with a medical professional. Now the next hack to lower my morning blood sugar that I discovered during my six month experiment will probably shock you. But before we dive into that, let me share something super exciting with you. If you've lived with diabetes for some time, or even if you're newly diagnosed, you've probably learned a lot about this condition. And the reason why I'm so excited is that there is now an easy way how you can share your diabetes experience and even get paid for it through an organization called DQNA. All members of the DQNA community are paid to answer quarterly diabetes surveys while learning about new diabetes products and services. Your voice can shape companies and organizations in the diabetes space and make life with diabetes better for everyone. The DQNA surveys have directly influenced the development of over 190 devices and therapies. And I'm a strong believer that together we can fundamentally change the future of diabetes. So if you want your voice to be heard, please do me a favor and sign up for a survey on the DQNA website. Link is down below. And huge thanks to DQNA for making this video possible. Now here is the shocking discovery I made about my blood sugar during the experiment. On 95% of the nights I didn't drink any alcohol. Here you can see how my average glucose graph looked on those nights without alcohol. The morning blood sugar was not always perfect, but it was okay. But on several nights I decided to drink a couple shots of whiskey for the sake of this experiment. And something really interesting happened. I noticed that my blood sugar started dropping between 3 and 4 a.m. and I woke up with a non-diabetic morning blood sugar every time after drinking the whiskey. The impact of alcohol is clearly noticeable in this graph. So is hack number four drinking a couple shots of whiskey before bedtime? Well that's really up to you but let me explain what whiskey does and what other kinds of alcohol do to our blood sugar. And we need to talk about liver again because as you mentioned earlier in this video, liver releases glucose in early morning hours. And this glucose spikes our blood sugar. But another function of liver is to break down alcohol so it can go away from our body. Now the liver is not good at multitasking and apparently it chooses to metabolize alcohol over releasing glucose. And that's why my blood sugar not only didn't spike in the early mornings after drinking, but it actually dropped even lower. Now this can look as a good thing at first, but it can easily turn into a bad thing. If you drink too much, your blood sugar might drop too low while you sleep. And if you drink too often, the alcohol will destroy your liver over time. Another thing to be careful about is that not every alcohol is created equal. Drinks like whiskey, vodka or dry wine have zero or very little carbs and they will not spike your blood sugar. But beer or sweet cocktails with added sugar are full of carbs and they might spike your blood sugar to the moon as you can see in this chart. Now you're probably going to agree with me when I say that drinking alcohol excessively is not a good long-term plan to reduce your morning blood sugar. But what about water, coffee or other drinks? Can they help? Let's have a look right now and please don't skip this part because the last drink I'm gonna talk about might become a game changer for you. During my six month experiment I drank a big glass of water before going to bed and another big glass of water right after I woke up. I did that every other day. And here is my average blood sugar graph from those days when I did drink water. You can see that my average fasting blood sugar was 107 and my average blood sugar two hours after eating breakfast was 140. On the days when I did not drink the extra 
extra water, my average blood sugar graph was not very different. In fact, my average fasting blood sugar was actually slightly better, only 105, and my average blood sugar two hours after eating breakfast was slightly worse, 143. So drinking extra water didn't make a big difference for me. But there have been studies done which showed that not drinking enough water can lead to increased risk of type 2 diabetes. So watch out for that. It is also important to stay hydrated anytime you're using a continuous glucose monitor, because the accuracy of CGM readings can be negatively impacted, and they might be off whenever you are dehydrated. Now one drink that impacts my blood sugar the most is coffee. I used to start my day with a cup of coffee, but I don't do that anymore, and here is why. I compared my morning blood sugar levels on the mornings when I didn't drink any coffee, in blue, and on the mornings when I drank coffee, as the first thing after waking up. These are in red. Although coffee has zero carbs, we can see a clear spike in the average blood sugar caused by the coffee. A cup of coffee spikes my blood sugar by about 30 to 40 milligrams per deciliter when I drink it first thing in the morning. But interestingly, when I drink coffee a little bit later in the morning on the days like today, it almost doesn't spike my blood sugar at all. And that's why my hack number three to lower morning blood sugar is don't drink coffee first thing in the morning. It won't necessarily help you to lower fasting blood sugar, but it will help you to avoid the spike after you're getting up. And here is another tip for a drink. This one has been proved by many studies to lower fasting blood sugar. Apple cider vinegar. In an American Diabetes Association study, they compared two groups of diabetics. One group consumed two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar before bedtime, the other did not. The group that did take the vinegar saw a 4 to 6% reduction in their morning blood glucose levels. And it certainly did help them fight the dawn effect. Of course, when I saw these results, I immediately decided to include ACV or apple cider vinegar to my experiment. Here are the results. In blue, you can see my average blood sugar levels at night and in the morning following a shot of vinegar before bed. And in red are my average blood sugar levels at night and in the morning without the vinegar. There is literally no difference. So apple cider vinegar didn't work for me. But the next thing I'm gonna talk about did work. And this next hack might be super helpful, especially for those of you who wake up with non-diabetic blood sugar, but struggle with a blood sugar spike right after you get up. Remember I told you earlier in this video that my blood sugar always starts spiking around 6 a.m. and it continues to spike until about 9 a.m.? I also mentioned that when I increased my insulin, it helped me eliminate about 80% of that spike. I'm simply more insulin resistant early in the morning, and that's why I typically need more insulin during that time. And from my experience, most diabetics have the exact same problem. But during my six month experiment, I realized that increasing insulin is not the only way to deal with this. Another way to avoid that early morning spike was going for a run or doing a workout early in the morning, right after I woke up. Look at that. On the days I went for a 45 minute run between 6 and 7 a.m., I was able to completely eliminate the early morning spike. I was actually able to bring my blood sugar slightly lower. That's really fascinating, isn't it? I'm obsessed by all these little things that impact my blood sugar. And that's why I started a new exciting project the Blood Sugar Academy. The Blood Sugar Academy is my exclusive coaching program that will help you live your life to the fullest while achieving solid blood sugar numbers and lower HbA1c. If you want to learn more, click the link down below and register your interest. I will be sure to share more information with you once the program is launched. But now moving on to my absolute favorite hack on how to fix morning glucose levels and that's my secret breakfast. This breakfast is low in carbs, high in fiber, and rich in both proteins and healthy fats. It's called shakshuka, and it's a savory masterpiece full of flavor. To make it, I use extra virgin olive oil and gently simmer a medium-sized onion and a medium-sized bell pepper. After about five minutes, I add my spices, a few glass of garlic, ground cumin, paprika, and chili. After another couple minutes, I add a few ripe tomatoes or a small can of peeled tomatoes and cook the mixture for several more minutes until all the flavors connect. At this point, I'm adding chopped cilantro, giving the mixture another stir, and adding three eggs in these little wells. I'm gonna cook everything covered for about five more minutes because I want my eggs to be poached, but not fully cooked, 
and voila, it's done. You can garnish everything with some more cilantro and parsley and just enjoy the delicious healthy breakfast. Guys, I guarantee you, you will love that breakfast. It will satisfy your taste buds and keep your morning blood sugar in check. And by the way, there are 10 more ways how you can hack your post meal blood sugar and keep it from spiking. I will tell you all about them in this video. So go ahead, click it and watch it next. Don't forget to join the DQ&A community and I will see you in the next one. Ciao.